Hey there, it's Rachel from All About Planners. In this video, I'm doing a review of the Erin Condren Hardbound Life Planner. So, you guys have probably all seen the spiral or coil bound version um, that is very popular all over the internet. So, I wanted to see what the hardbound one was like to compare it because these coils can get quite bulky and in terms of weight. So, I found these two, the large and the small version on Zulily, which has um, a lot of stuff on clearance, not just planner supplies like clothes and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, and they sometimes randomly have planner stuff on there and pens. So if you saw my review of the Uli pens, that's where I got them from because they were on clearance. So because it was on clearance and a lot cheaper, it doesn't have the personalization that comes if you get it from the Erin Condren website like direct. So instead of having the name printed on there, it's just blank. For me, it's not a big deal. I'm going to get out my foiling machine and make a monogram sticker or some monogram letters. You could also get a gold Sharpie and personalize it that way or stick a photo on there. So considering it was a lot cheaper and I didn't have to pay the ridiculously expensive shipping um, from the US to get it here to Australia, I was like, yep, I'm going to snap these up and see what they look like. So let's have a closer look. So we've got 8x10 in the vertical size. So it is a bit bigger than the normal planners from Erin Condren. Here's one that I brought the other year. So as you can see, it's got a bit more extra space. So if you need some more room, then this one would be a good option. And then also the smaller 5x8. They're very light because they don't have that heavy coil. So if you are looking for something that you need to take on the go and it's a large size, this would be a good option. It is got a weird like soft cover that is attracting dust. Um, which could get a bit annoying. Okay, so in terms of size, it is the size of the pages. So if I get my pop and ruler out, it's about eight inches wide, and then you've got a little bit extra where the cover sticks out a smidge more. So that is the true to size page size, not the cover size, because sometimes it can be a bit confusing um, with the planners when they have the size on the website. Okay, so we've got this really pretty gold foil continued throughout the planner. In terms of thickness, it's only about one centimeter, which is not too bad. And it doesn't weigh too much either. Okay, so let's have a look. So we've got really pretty gold foil quotes. Love it. Lots of pretty shimmer on that. So these cute petals, or paint swatches, whatever you want to call them, are continued throughout. And it's got a really pretty gold foil detailing as well, which I love. Because it doesn't have tabs, but it's still pretty. I really, just really am obsessed with everything gold foil at the moment. Okay, so we've got the dates at a glance calendars for 12 months of the year. Really love that font. And some big note-taking space. And then this section here, you could use it for one month per box because there's 12 of them. Or you could use it for anything that you like. Project planning, um, events, birthdays that are happening each month, cleaning schedules, reminders, uh, last time you did. So keep track of last time you changed your toothbrush, that sort of stuff. Um, that would be a good use for these pages because they don't have any titles um, pre-filled on them, which is brilliant. And then the monthly calendar. So nice big boxes. So if I do a quick measure of them... About 1.75 wide by approx 1.5 high. So that's pretty roomy boxes and you still get a nice um, pattern up the top as well. So it's not just a boring you know, bunch of boxes on the page as some uh, monthly calendars are. So it starts on a Sunday, which is consistent with that dates at a glance calendar. One thing that I don't really think is necessary is all these moon cycles. I don't personally use them, but I had someone comment saying they use them for gardening. So... I mean, if, if they work for you, then they're there if you need them. It's got um, holidays printed. It is a planner from the US, so it's got US holidays. Nice big sidebar. Not really sure why they've got notes, title, and then like another space to put a title here. It kind of seems unnecessary, but it's still got a cute little asterisk on there. Anyway, uh, lined notes page um, section, which is good because if it's not lined, my writing just ends up being horrendously crooked and messy and looks terrible. I mean, it looks terrible anyway, but it looks even worse if there's no lines to write on. So I really like that there's lines continued through the weekly spread. So very similar to the um, weekly spread that you probably all know from the normal Erin Condren planners. And then open-ended space down the bottom with the three sections per day. So it is a bit dark with the grey, but it's not pure black. So you could write with a black pen. It might just be hard to see. Um, if I'm going to use this planner, which I probably will try it out this year, then I would use the Uniball Signo in white, or I think the Pilot Poplol has a white pen as well. Anyway, you can get white pens, and then that would be uh, make it a lot clearer to see what you've written when you've got a planner that has dark colours like this. Because I know there's a lot of colours these days that have black and neutral colours, so that's one way to get around it, is use a white pen. So the weekly spread starts on a Monday, which is a bit confusing for me because the monthly calendar starts on a Sunday, 
So just keep that in mind. And I do like that it's got this little banner here when it's a public holiday. It's a cute little extra touch. Little box, you can put whatever you like, a quote. You could stick some stickers over the top of this, like a habit tracking sticker. So it is a very open-ended layout that you could customize in so many different ways. Um, if you get sick of writing the same headings all over the page each week, that is a lot of writing that you're going to have to do continue throughout the entire planner. I do have a tutorial on my blog. I'll include the link below on how to make header stickers if you want to just make them and then you can stick them on rather than having to hand write things out. I do think it's a good idea to start when you've got a new planner handwriting things out and then you can change it easily and see if you like those categories or not and you might want to change it up and then once you're happy with the um, headings that you've got for each section or your planning categories then I would go and make some stickers because you'll save a lot of time if you just stick them on the page then handwriting it out all the time. Alrighty so we've got the weekly spreads continued, some cute quotes. So let's continue, have a little quick flip through. Same continued throughout the entire planner. Nice neutral colors. You could go crazy with color coding and it wouldn't look bad because it'll look really nice against the black. So I am gravitating more towards neutral colored planners because then I can color code and put washi tape and stickers and it still looks classy because sometimes with one of the other, um, some of the other Erin Condren ones that have the colored background, if you put colored stickers and stuff on there, it clashes and they've got some really gross color combinations like yellow and green. I just, oh, it's so looks terrible I would never pair those two colors together so with neutral you can choose your own color schemes so I am gravitating more towards the neutral um, colored planners got a built-in ribbon bookmark which is handy because there's no tabs so if we continue through to the back there is some grid dot paper and some line paper so a couple of pages of that which is good because sometimes planners just include one or two and to me it's kind of like why would you bother because I can't really put anything in here you know like you need a couple of pages to put if you want to put cleaning schedules and password logs and one or two just isn't going to cut it you have to carry around a separate notebook there is quite a few so that's good and some blank paper as well that's very good because not many include lined dot grid and blank paper so you've got all options I'll have to do some pen testing I'll include the link below um, when I do it and you can check it out on the blog if you're interested if you're a bit of um, OCD when it comes to pens you don't like bleed through and ghosting and all that kind of stuff which probably seems a bit trivial but it really it does make a difference if you can see what's written on the other side through the page of the week on the next one it just looks really messy and yuck and it just makes you not want to use the planner so that's why I always do a pen test okay then we've got the dates at a glance for the following year and I really like these three I always do top three um, dot points below so you can plan ahead I really like that and I would probably even like that for the current year as well for 2018. Very nice. I'm This is probably my favorite page from the whole spread. Really like it. Love it. So functional but still pretty. And then another pretty gold quote. It actually it feels like you can feel the foil. Love that. On the back and then it's continued again. Covers really nice and smooth. So let's go through the smaller one. The horizontal. So 5x8, very good portable size, feels very light, probably weighs about as much as my Kindle, which is pretty good because then you won't even notice it's in there and you won't feel like you're lugging around a brick. And we've got 2018 on the spine and that cute little asterisk. And very similar to the other one, like it's got those same quotes, same um, black feature. You can get other colours and styles, I just really liked the neutral black and the gold foil. Um, apart from rainbow, that's my favourite like colour combination or I guess... Um, theme for a planner. So similar to the other one we've got the dates at a glance pages. This one you'll notice is a lot smaller like that's my hand so it's definitely a lot more portable. So this one would be a good companion um, planner if you're going to be using two planners and you might want to keep one at home as your, plan as your family planner you could use the big one and then for on the go stuff for just you if you don't need to keep track of everyone else's schedules you just need to um, do your own stuff or work then a smaller size one would be handy. Same deal with the moon cycles and the public holidays. Starts on a Sunday. The sidebar is a bit too narrow in my opinion. I don't think I could really use that. It's only, it's not even one and a half inches wide. So if you write something, it's going to basically fill the whole column. So not really a fan of the thin sidebar. They may as well have just, I don't know, expanded out the boxes a bit. Not sure on that sidebar. Okay, so horizontal. So horizontal, I much personally, in my opinion, prefer horizontal planners to vertical 
because I do write long tasks. I don't write um, just one or two words for a task. I like having space to list it out and that's what um, Horizontal lets you do. So that's why I always prefer them. And they also give you the option if you wanted to put a line down the middle and split the box. So if you only needed a little section you wanted to separate, meal planning for example, you can draw the line wherever you like with the horizontal, a very open-ended um, layout. And then uh, week starts on a Monday, same as the large version, which I do find a bit odd when all the others start on a Sunday, including the monthly calendar. So keep that in mind. It has got this sewn um, like book bounding. Uh, so this is good, it's laying flat, so if I try one of the other weekly spreads, it's laying, it's laying flat, which is great, because not many of them do that, so very pleased with that. It's laying flat. Brilliant! That doesn't happen very often. Woohoo, plan a piece. Finally found a sewn bound notebook that will stay flat. Okay, so we've got um, some quotes scattered throughout. I mean, they're nice, but they do take up note-taking space. So if you were using this space for the same thing each week, for example, sticking habit tracking stickers or social media, that kind of thing, and you were relying on this whole space and didn't want to cover up the quote, then you have to modify how you're planning that week. It may seem a bit petty, but I like it to be consistent if you're going to use it each week. When I did stick to planning, using a planner for a couple of weeks in a row, I liked having it the same thing. Just a... OCD moment for me. Okay, so let's go to the back. I'm assuming it's going to be the same deal as the vertical. So we've got some lined space. You probably saw the peak at the pen test. So I'm assuming that the paper is the same. Well, it feels the same. I can't imagine they would use a different paper for the large and the smaller size version. So as for pen testing, unfortunately a lot of the pens had ghosting. As per usual, the Sharpie Ultra Fine Point bled through. Highlighters had a bit of ghosting. So if I was going to use this planner, I would probably go with probably the first one, the Papermate Enjoy 100. That one's a really nice ballpoint pen. Cheap, comes in lots of colours, highly recommend. So line space and then some dot red and some blank. Lots of note-taking space, brilliant. And then at the back, we have the Dates at a Glance calendar. Same format as the large with the cute little asterisk and the top three. Um, you are a bit more pressed for space because of the size of this planner, but still a very functional page. And then the same quote. I just really love touching the foil. It's like you can feel the indent on the page. It feels really cool. And then gold foil on the back. So if you're interested in purchasing the hardbound one, I hope this gave you a good flick through of what it looks like. I think I actually prefer it to the coil version. Um, to the other traditional ones. It's very similar with the aesthetics with the black um, But this one had a bit of more pop of a color whereas the other ones completely neutral. That was the hourly um, So this one I haven't seen it in the hourly it might not have been available on Zulily in the hourly hardbound format um, But I do know that there was the vertical and horizontal So I hope you found this video helpful and don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in more planner reviews and I'll include some links to some other um, Erin Condren reviews that I've done as well if you're trying to decide if it's worth it because I know they are quite an expensive planner.